praise the Lord. It's good to be in church. Amen. All right, Brother Money, it is time for you to come on up. Amen. And Brother Money is a dear friend of mine. And, uh, you know, we've got to be friends because we play golf together. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so, brother, God Amen. bless you, my friend. Thank you. Thank you, much. Pastor Frost. Good to be here today. Good to be here at Solid Rock Baptist Church. And this is, again, the stewardship uh, day and conference and meeting. Uh, we've been talking about uh, what God has been given us in uh, possession and how that we handle that. And last night we talked about an area of scripture. We talked about a steward that was a bad steward and a steward that mishandled uh, what his owner had and how we talked about uh, he wasted his goods. And so we looked at the word waste. And as a steward, um, we want to have as little waste as possible. We don't, we don't want to waste things because as a steward, uh, what we have in our hands and what we have available to us is not ours. Uh, what we have is not, is, is not our possession, but it's God's. And God has given us the ability and given us the responsibility to be caretakers of the things that are His. He is the Creator. He's the one that made it. It's His. He owns it. Uh, it it's not the, uh, you, you've heard that He owns a cow with, on a thousand hills, he owns not only the cattle, he owns the hills. And, and, and somebody said, Uncle Buddy said that he owns all the taters in those hills too. Hey, he owns it all, and we are stewards of what God has given us. So the Bible gives us many stories, and many, many parables, and many, many uh, principles about being a steward. And so last night uh, at the dinner, we talked about a bad steward or a poor steward, someone that mishandled and, and, and what that meant and how it applies to our own life. And he was a bad steward of the owner's goods. And this morning in Sunday school, we talked about in the Old Testament... The word, again, we brought up the word waste, okay? As a steward, we need to think about waste. And we talked about the children of Israel, God's chosen people, and how he told them. He said, listen, if you will steward my word, if you will steward my commandments uh, uh, and steward my testimony, he says, then I will bless you. And if, if you don't, then these things will happen to you, and it will cause waste in your life. It will cause destruction in your life. And so those were all warning points for us to be a good steward of the things that God has given to us. So as we look at stewardship, we look at this word waste. And so the next two services, this one now and the one following the meal today, will be again on that same topic. What I did was I started studying through the Bible, and I would, I would, I would urge you. You know what? I'm a, I like words. I like, I like to look at words, and, and, and I like to study the Bible sometimes just by a word and, and, and go through and find out the meaning and the word and the context and what it means here and what it means there and what's God, what, what God is saying. In the New Testament, we find five different times that God uses this word waste. And so today we will look at a passage. If you will turn with me for a moment to book of Mark, Mark chapter 14 this morning, Mark chapter 14. We'll read our passage today and get into our message. And uh, this is a little bit different. Uh, this word and this context of the word of waste is a little bit different because it's not... It's not the owner saying it was a wasteful servant, or it wasn't God saying it was waste. It was somebody else that said something was waste. And we're going to talk about that this morning and see how it applies in our life. Mark chapter number 14, verse number 1, the Bible says, After two days was the feast of the Passover and of unleavened bread, and the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might take him by craft and put him to death. You know what? These religious people that 
thought that they knew everything. Jesus came. We just celebrated Christmas, the birth of Jesus Christ. And, and the reason for the season is because Christ, God, sent His Son. God came to earth and dwelt among us. And the Bible says, you're going to call His name Emmanuel, which means God with us. And Christ walked this earth for just over 33 years. And, and He did the will of God. And He performed the miracles. And He showed Himself that he was God, and, and he went to a cross and he died. And these people, these religious people, were trying to kill him. They were trying to eradicate them. They were trying to get rid of him. And so here we have at the feast, this was almost, almost the time of his crucifixion, almost the time of that last Passover, and that this time happened. This was right at the end of his earthly ministry. He would soon go to the cross. He would soon be beaten by the Romans. He would soon shed his blood for, for, the, for the sins of mankind. The veil was going to be rent. He was going to be put in a tomb. And then three days later, he rose again. And, uh, and so we serve a risen Savior today. But here in this account, in this story, uh, God shows us here what happened. And this was close to his death. And so verse number two, but they said not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar of the people. You know what? They were not concerned about what God said. They were not concerned about God's commandments. They were concerned about what other people were going to say. They were concerned about what these folks would say or those folks would say. And so they cowered away and they did not do at that moment. And so we find Jesus here in a house, in verse number 3, and being in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at meat, there came a woman having a, an alabaster box of ointment of spikenard, very precious, the Bible says, and she broke the box and poured it on his head. And there were some that had indignation within themselves and said, why was the waste of this ointment made? For it might have been sold for more than 300 pence and have been given to the poor. And they murmured against her. And Jesus said, let her alone. Why trouble ye her? She hath wrought a good work on me. For ye have the poor with you always and and whensoever ye will, ye may do good, or do them good, but me ye have not always. She hath done what she could. She has come aforehand to anoint my body to the burying. Verily I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also that she hath done shall be spoken of for a memorial of her. Father, thank you for this time. Thank you for your goodness today. Lord, draw us into this passage. Help us to understand what you're saying. Help us to understand the stewardship aspect of this passage and, and how she used what she had for, for the purpose of your bearing and, and for a good reason and for a godly reason. I pray that, Lord, we would use what you have given us and Lord, we would take what we have so that the gospel would go out and that the gospel of Jesus Christ would be preached not only here in this community and in our state and in our nation, but all over the world because we have handled uh, what you have given us, our stewardship correctly. Lord, I love you today. May you be glorified. May you be honored. Lord, minister today. Give me the words to say. Move me out of the way so that you would be seen. In Christ's name, I pray. Amen and amen. So here we have a story. Now, the title of my message, I'm going to let you guess. I'm going to give you two words and you give me two words. Waste not. Well, that's good. Waste not, want not. I have to write that down. No, I'm just teasing you. Our message title this morning is Waste Not, Worship Not. Waste not, worship not. And that's in the context of what they said to her, that it was a waste. 
This was a waste. Now we have a story of two opposing views. You know, this was not a matter of a secular view or a communist view or a political view that these views were made. These were God's these were God's people. These were so-called Christians. These were all followers of Christ. They were following him. This was not the Sadducees or the Pharisees talking. These were the disciples. And we understand that from the passage in Matthew. He says that the disciples uh, had an uproar. The disciples said about this way. So there was disciples and this woman. And they had two separate views of what happened here. They had two, two different types of views. And let me just share some of the views this morning that they may have had in the area of stewardship. So they saw, saw stewardship a little different here. One of the views was her view. She saw an opportunity while others saw problems. She saw the opportunity. She saw that here was the Lord. He was He was. He was, he had already told him, hey, I am, I am going to the cross. They're going to take me. They're going to beat me. They're going to kill me. And I will rise again. And she had been listening to this. She had been listening to the master. I don't know what they've been listening to, but they did not hear what she had heard. And she saw an opportunity when they saw problems. It's different views. What do we see? And then just, just thinking this morning, how do we view how do we view the scriptures? How do we view what the Lord says? She saw opportunity and they saw problems. You know what? It didn't seem like anybody else was in tune with the Lord except her. She was in tune. She knew what was happening. She understood. She saw this opportunity. And my question is, are you in tune with the Lord today? Are you in tune? Are you in tune with what God is saying? Are you in tune with what He wants for your life today? Are you in tune with a risen Savior today? She was in tune that day. She saw opportunity and they saw problems. You know, some focused on the amount, but she was focused on the task. They focused on the amount. They were focused on, hey, that, that cost something. That, there, was a, there was an amount given to that uh, uh, a box of spikener, that, that precious oil. They said, hey, that cost about 300 pence. But she wasn't focused on the amount. She was focused on the worship. She was for, focused on the task. Hey, it didn't matter if it was 300 pence, 800 pence, 1,000 pence, a million pence, because she was focused on the task at hand. And that was to minister and to worship Christ. You know, oftentimes we're so focused on money. We're so focused on the things. We're so focused on what we uh, attribute value to. Instead of, I mean, how much does a soul cost? If we can reach one soul for Christ and one soul doesn't go to an eternity in hell for, forever, and if we can minister to somebody, if we can help somebody, if we can share Christ, what, what price is that? Well, you say, well, it, it cost me uh, 300 bucks or it cost me 800 bucks or this is what I had to give up. <laughs> I say this morning, Somebody gave for you. Somebody gave so that you can hear the gospel. And you know what? She was not focused on the amount. She was focused on the task. There was no holding back. There was no return for her. You know, some valued the ointment over the action, but she valued the Savior over the oil. Now, I have today, I have, I brought, I actually bought this. This is not precious ointment. <laughs> this is... Uh, this is uh, some type of body spray I just bought from Walmart. But I wanted to use it just as an illustration in my hand that this costs something. And they viewed, they viewed uh, things differently than she did. You know what? They viewed, they saw the value in the ointment, and she viewed the value in the Savior. You know what? He's worth it. He's worth it. He's worth it when we give. He's worth it when we serve. He's worth it when we play. You know what? This little young girl up here played the cello. What a blessing that was today. You know what? 
you're not worth it, <laughs> but he is. <laughs> Ooh, honestly, he loves it. honestly, he loves it. this beautiful song that was sang today, the praises that we pray, we're not worth it. We're not, we're not worth all of, of what we have, but he is. Amen. He's worth it. And she saw the value in the Savior where they saw it in the oil. They saw it in the ointment. And so here we have two views of stewards. Uh, Can I ask you a question? What steward are you? You know, she probably could have bought a lot of things with that oil. What the value was, it was of great value. This was about a year's salary um, to purchase this ointment from what I understand. This was was was. Really, a lot of money. Now, again, this, this bottle was very little. <laughs> but what she broke that day was very precious. It was a lot of money. She could have done a lot of things to her house. She probably could have done a lot of things for her home. She pr- probably could have bought a lot of groceries for that, for that amount of ointment. But what she did was she saw a greater value in the Lord. And she wanted to give it for His purposes. For his value. Now think with me this morning. So, so some valued the ointment over the action. And she valued the Savior over the oil. You know a different view here that I see. Some got bent out of shape. <laughs> some got bent out of shape. But she bowed in humility. As we look in this passage, some people just got bent out of shape. They got mad. They got upset. Hey, what are you doing? It wasn't even their ointment. It wasn't even their possession. And they got upset. You know, sometimes in church, we get bent out of shape. We get bent out of shape out of little stuff. And we miss the point. We just miss it. We just overlook it. But she bent. They got bent out of shape and... She bowed in humility. Praise God. Glory to God. She was there to worship her Savior. And so our views sometimes get skewed. They get out of line. And she valued the Savior. She bowed in humility while others got bent out of shape. You You know what that tells me? What's on the inside usually does come out. What's on the inside usually does come out. You know, she, some saw it as waste, they said right here in this passage. Um, verse number four, the end of it. Why was this waste of the ointment made? Some saw it as waste, but you know what Jesus saw it as? Worship. Jesus saw it as worship. Some said um, she shouldn't have done it. Some probably said, well, she went a little too far. Um, Some probably said it could have been used a little more sparingly or it could have had a better use. But I think in her heart she said, waste not, worship not. And you know what? Here's a statement I want to give you, and this is a, a main statement. If you're going to waste your time, If you're going to waste your abilities, if you're going to waste your resources, waste them on the Lord. (laughs) Think about that. Now, you know, you know, you know, I'm not talking, you know, I'm not saying that what we do for the Lord is a waste. I'm using it in their context, in the context of these people that stood up and said, why was that waste made? Hey, they got upset. They got bent out of shape. They called her on the carpet. What are you doing? If you're going to waste your resources, and you know what? Americans are great wasters, aren't we? (laughs) We waste our time. We waste our resources. We waste our abilities. We're we're wasting finances. If you're going to waste something, what greater place to waste it on is on Jesus, on the Lord, on the Savior. Hey, use your talents for God. Use your abilities for God. Use your resources for the Lord. Use your, your, your time for God. Why don't you take that time instead of wasting it on TV that you waste it in the Word of God or waste it in the presence of God? You're not wasting it. You're investing it. But according to them, it's a waste. If you're going to waste, (laughs) and we're pretty good at it. My hand's way up there. 
We might as well waste it on him. Boy, why don't you waste that hour in church? Why don't you waste that hour before the throne? Why don't you waste that, hour, that, that money in the offering? Why don't you waste it on getting the gospel out? Some people say, that's a waste. And God said, no, that's worship. <laughs> that's worship. I tell you, folks, she wasn't wasting. But waste not, <laughs> worship not. If we're not wasting it in the right place, we're just wasting it. You know, that box of spike nerd was just sitting there. I can imagine, I can imagine it being in her house, and, and, it, and it's just there. <laughs> there it is on the shelf. She goes and does some cooking, and it's there. And she may go in the other room, clean, it's there. This, this bottle, this precious ointment, it took her a while, I'm sure, to buy it. I'm sure if it's, a, if it's a year's wages, it took her a while to afford that. But she finally got that, and it was sitting there. She may have used some. She may have put some on. It may, may have been great fragrance for a house, but it was sitting there. What it was was it was wasted potential. Last night we talked about wasted goods. This morning we talked about a wasted testimony. And today we want to talk about wasted potential. What could God do with someone that's sold out for Him? What could God do with the, the things that are sitting around in your life that, that have value? What, is, what could God do with that, with that hidden talent or that ability that, that you don't know that you have because it's just sitting there? What could God do with those finances that are sitting there? What could God do with that testimony that's sitting there? What could God do with that voice that's sitting there? It's potential, but it's just wasted sitting there. It's just sitting there. <laughs> what she did is she decided to stop letting it sit there. She went to the Savior at the right time and broke it and anointed him. You see, that's not a waste, is it? It's not a waste when we waste it on the Lord. It's of great investment. If we're going to waste, let's not let it waste in hidden potential or, or wasted potential. Let's waste it on the Lord. So this was a wasted potential. Can I ask you the question? This one I want to look at for just a moment. What made her different in this story? What, 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 was, what made the difference here? I think there's some things. I want to give you three quick things that made her different. First of all, what made her different was what she did was personal. It made her different. What she did was personal. This was publicly done, but it was privately directed. What she was doing was she wasn't trying to be the, 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 the show that day. She wasn't even trying to be a sideshow. This was something that was personal. She did this in public, but it was, it was done directed to the Savior. She wasn't trying to get any glory, any honor. She was trying to worship her God, and it was in a public setting. You know, sometimes, sometimes we, we do things or we serve the Lord. We have a great pianist up here. Chris, Kristen is doing a great job. You know what? It's a public service, but it ought to be a private, <laughs> privately directed. It's not for people to see. It's not for show. It ought to be to the Savior. We ought to do it to the Lord. When we give in the offering, when we give to the Lord, it's done publicly, but it ought to be directed privately. You see, the, so the, the Pharisees that day, they did everything publicly, but they, did it, they wanted everything shown publicly. They, they did things publicly. They did things in the people's view so that the people could see them. They weren't concerned about what God uh, was, was saying, what God thought about them. They wanted to do it publicly so that they could be seen publicly. I think what was different about her is she did it publicly but wanted to be seen privately. Does that make sense to you this morning? She did that for the Savior. That's what made 
her different. It was not for show. And you know what? She really didn't seem to care what other people thought. It sure didn't seem that way. What she did was personal. What she gave was precious. What she gave was precious. Not only what she did was personal, but what she gave was precious. It was of value, there's no doubt. That ointment that she gave, that she broke, was of great value. But can I say, value isn't everything. There are things that have been given in this world of great value, but it cost people nothing or cost people little. It was more, it wasn't the value, it was the sacrifice that she made. It not only was a valuable thing, but it took from her and it cost her. And so I think this morning, not only was it she was different because what she gave was personal, but what she gave was precious. It was both valuable and it was costly. You know, sometimes we want to give the excess. We want to give the leftovers. We want to give things that, that, that won't bother us, that, 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 that is above uh, our means. But this woman gave not, not, beyond, not to her means, but beyond her means. She didn't give the Lord the excess. She didn't give the leftovers. It was, only, it was both valuable and it was costly. What she did was personal. What she gave was precious. And what it accomplished was purposeful. What it accomplished was purposeful. It made a difference. It accomplished the task. But it also, think about this. It not only accomplished a task and it, and it made a difference, but it pointed to God. What she did was pur purposeful. It pointed to the Lord. What she did put the attention on Him. She wasn't trying to put the attention on her. And oftentimes, we want to bring the attention on us. Look what we did. Look what we have done. Look how we have served. Look at our things. But our, our giving, our serving should be patterned after her. And that attention should be on the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now think about this. Just give you a thought here. Look, think about this. I wonder how long that smell was on the Lord. Think about it. Now she did that, the Bible says, Christ said, for His burying, which was, which was really soon, Okay? So if it was for his burying, then I would imagine it lasted <laughs> through the crucifixion. I don't know, but that was a lot of ointment. It was very powerful. It was very potent. It was very expensive. And when she dumped that whole ointment on him, every time someone would get a whiff of that, who, who is that? You know what it did? It pointed to Jesus. Yeah. It pointed to the Lord. Hey, oh, Jesus is in the room. <laughs> oh, Jesus is down our street. Oh, there he is. I, think about this. Now think about this. When they were in the upper room breaking bread, I wonder if the disciples smelled it. Why oh, it smells good. That's our Lord. I wonder when Judas... Kissed the Lord, that he smelled it. Think about it. I wonder when the Roman citizens put the crown of thorns on his head. I wonder if the fragrance was still there. I wonder if they could smell it. I wonder when Peter denied him and the cock crow. That smell came through the air. And Jesus looked at him. I wonder if he could still smell it. I wonder when the Roman soldiers, when they put the nails in his hand and the hammers came down, with that fragrance, what's that, guys? It's him. 
That's him. I wonder when the spear went through his side. That soldier was so close. There was probably a lot of smells that day. But I wonder if he caught a whiff. You see, the, he was long gone from the leper's house. He was long gone from the woman who anointed him. But her work, I would only imagine, I can't say it for sure, but I can only imagine the smell was still there. I can only imagine that soldier got a whiff. I can only imagine when Joseph of Arimathea took his body down and they put him in that grave. You see, they anointed him for his burial. But I wonder if he got... <laughs> I wonder if he got a little bit on him. I wonder if he got a little bit of the smell on him. I wonder. You see, what she did was purposeful. What she did was not for her. It pointed people to him. I would imagine a month, a year, two years later, when that soldier was going through the city streets and he smelled that ointment he thought about the cross you see what she did Amen. was personal it was really a public demonstration but it was between her and her savior what she did was not only personal but what she did was precious what she what she did was personal. What she gave was precious. And what it accomplished was purposeful. That fragrance probably affected many people. And every time people smelled it, it pointed to Him. You see, God wants us to be stewards that give our life, our talents, our potential, on a personal level. On a personal level. He wants us to give so it's purposeful. Purposeful. So that it affects other people. You know, we can waste a lot of things that doesn't matter. You know what? All those things you just gave to your grandkids are probably torn, tattered, busted, And it's all going to happen. And that's not a, you know, we all spoil. I got a grandchild. I'm going to spoil him. But I ought not to spoil him more than I spoil the Lord. Come on. I ought not to give more to him than I give to God. Come on. You know, because when I waste not, I worship not. And if I'm going to waste my life, because I have one of them. I tell you what, I'm going to waste it on him. You say it's a waste, the world says it's a waste, whatever, whoever, whatever. <laughs> but it ain't a waste <laughs> when we give it to him. It was purposeful. What she gave was personal. What she did was personal. What she gave was precious. What it accomplished was purposeful. Can I make these comments and I'll be done? She gave what she could. It was in her possession. It was she didn't get a loan for it. She didn't go borrow it. She gave what she could. It was in her possession. She gave while she could. This was the opportunity. Now was the time to give. Now was the time. Now was the opportunity. Jesus said, I'm not going to be with you later. The poor you'll have always. The poor you can have opportunities later. But she gave while she could. Now was an opportunity. And she said, I'm going to do it while I can now. And then she gave according to the need. It was appropriate sacrifice to the need that was apparent. And so she gave according to the need. Can I ask you a question this morning? What do we have that's just sitting there? 
What do we have that's just sitting there? Uh, life is but a vapor, <laughs> appears for a little while, and then it's gone. Your life is sitting there. Your time is sitting there. Your abilities are sitting there. You know what? We, what, could we, what could we use to praise the Lord if we take the time to do it? What could we give for the, for the praising of God if we just give it? What is the wasted potential? You know, she pointed, she used something that was sitting there. What's sitting there in our life? What's, what's waiting there to be used? What could God use? Maybe it's your time. Maybe it's your talents. Maybe it's your treasure. What's there? Is there something you're holding back? Is there something in your life that's wasting away that could be better used when somebody goes, Lord, what's that? <laughs> Boy, that, that smells pretty good. Boy, is that, is that someone that's been around Jesus? <laughs> she is a testimony of a steward that took the opportunity to use hidden or wasted potential, something of great value, something that was lasting. And Jesus said, when you hear this story, all over the world is going to point to me. <laughs> they're going, when they hear it, they're going to smell the sweet fragrance right. of Jesus That's Christ. Right. So what are we giving? What are we using? How are we taking our abilities, our talents, our treasures, and could we just waste them <laughs> on the Lord? Father, thank you for this time. Thank you for this account. It's a real account. And Lord, it's so powerful. It's so right. It's so real. And Lord, oftentimes we forget how much you have given us, how much we, we have the ability. Lord, we live in a free country. We have many liberties. And Lord, they're oftentimes stagnant. We don't use them. They're sitting there. And when we could share the gospel or tell the story. Lord, help us to be used to point people to Christ. Lord, I love you today. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Would you stand with me this morning? Every head bowed, every eye closed, nobody looking around. Just say, Brother Money, today... I, there's many reasons that people came here today, and I don't know what your reason is to come here. You may be here today, and you're lost, and you're without Christ, and you don't know the Savior, and you've never trusted Him as your personal Savior. I pray today that you would come. You would give your life to Christ. He died for you. He sacrificed His, his life for you. He, he died. He, he paid your sin penalty. And the Bible says, For whosoever shall call Upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Maybe here today you're, you're lost and you need a Savior. We have someone that could take the Bible and show you.